Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss stock redemption. It's a fancy word for stock buyback. This is what we learned in financial accounting and intermediate accounting. The term in taxation is called stock redemption. What is the big idea of stock redemption? Stock redemption is the process when the shareholder sells back their stock back to the company. Now, a stock buyback, it's when the corporation buys back the stock. So it's the same transaction, except here we are assuming that the shareholder is selling the stock back to the company. But the shareholder here, what we are assuming is controls the company. So the shareholder makes the decision on behalf of the corporation. Typically, they will, the, the company would give them either cash or some other asset. Let's start with a simple example to see, to look at the big picture. Let's assume I invested $10,000 in my company and issued 1,000 shares for four hat lectures, you know, 20 years ago. So really my basis in the shares, if I invest at 10,000, issued 1,000 shares, it's $10 per share. Over the years, Farhat Lectures made a million dollars in earnings and profit. Here's what happened now. I redeemed, I sold back 200 of my shares to Farhat Lectures for 3,000. Remember, when I started this business, I contributed $10,000 to the corporation. This is the corporation. And the corporation gave me stock of the company. Now what I did, I said, okay, now, and they gave me specifically, we issued 1000 shares. What I did now, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to sell back 200 of those stocks and I want you to give me back $3,000. That's what we did. So it's like the opposite of when the company was established. So I redeemed those shares. Now, if I redeemed those shares and this is truly a sale, here's what, here's what would happen. My proceeds are $3,000. My cost basis is 2000 Well, I have a profit of 1000 long-term capital gain. I, I will multiply this by long-term capital gain rate, which could be 0, 15, or 20%. It's taxed as capital gain. Now, the IRS might question this. The IRS might say, you know what? This doesn't, like, this doesn't look really like a sale. This, most likely, this, this, this is likely a dividend. Now, why? Why is the IRS concerned it's a dividend and not a sale? So let's talk about from a benefit motivational perspective. As, as, as the owner of the company, as Farhat, would I rather treat this as a long-term capital gain or would I rather treat this as a dividend? Well, the dividend rate is also 0, 15, and 20%, assuming it's a qualified dividend. So the rate is the same. What would be different? Well, for one thing, if it was dividend, the full amount, the 3,000 will be subject to this amount. If it's a long-term capital gain, I can deduct my losses. However, this is as an individual. As a corporate shareholder, we're gonna see later, you might prefer dividend and we'll see this in numbers. Again, the IRS would always want you to treat this or they would prefer that you treat it as dividend. Now let's think about this for a moment. Let's think about this before we proceed any further. What can I do as Farhat? What can I do to keep treating this as long-term capital gain. Well, I can forever do what? I can forever issue new stock dividend to myself. In other words, you remember when we talked about stock dividend, the company issue new stock dividend to the current shareholder. I will take those stock dividend, I will take those newly issued stock and exchange them for cash. And I, keep, I can keep doing this and treat those as long-term capital gain. You see where the problem could occur, where the IRS would say, hold on a second, you're taking money out you're treating it as long-term capital gain, but it should be classified as a dividend. Now, in this session, we need to learn when is it classified as stock redemption indeed, and when it's not. We're gonna look at the big picture. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So a stock redemption, for a stock redemption to, to qualify for a sale treatment, it must generally lead to a significant decrease in the term that they use, substantial reduction in the, share, in the shareholder's ownership stake in the corporation. Let's go back to my example. Let's go back to my example. 
I of, of 1,000 shares, I sold back 20 shares. I still own 980. Let's assume rather than 20, I sold back 800 of my shares. I still have 200 shares. Those 200 shares still represent 100% ownership. So even if I sell 999 shares of the thousand, sell it back to the company, I'm still 100% owner. So there's no substantial reduction in my ownership. Therefore, this doesn't look like a sale. This looks like a dividend, okay? And we're gonna learn later in another session, there's something called stock attribution rules. So sometimes you might sell your shares but you are still owner of the company. You may not have, you, you, may, you may be out altogether, but indirectly you could still be an owner. We'll talk about this in the next session, but this is the big picture here. So as a show, sole shareholder, you only have a sale if you have a complete redemption. Simply put, you're getting out. And sometimes even when you get out through stock attribution rules, you might still be an owner. But the point I'm trying to make for, for the IRS to consider my redemption as a sale, I really have to get out. Now, why redemption occurs? So why do companies buy back their shares? Well, if it's a publicly traded company, there are many reasons, but one reason is to bid the, bid the price up to increase the price of the stock. They buy it. So therefore, it increases the demand to reward the shareholder because the price goes up, it rewards the shareholder. And this way, you can, you can reward them with no tax distribution. In other words, So why redemption occurs? Well, for public companies, they want to bid the price up. In other words, they want to create more demand for their price. They want to reward the shareholders. So when the price goes up, there are no tax consequences to the shareholders. There are many reasons, but this is one of the reasons. For closely held companies, which is private companies, sometimes they buy the stock back when the shareholder passes away. Or there's a divorce situation, husband and wife, they own the same company. They're getting a divorce. Well, you will sell back the stock to the company. Agreement between shareholder and corporation. Basically, there's five shareholders and they have an agreement. If one, if one leaves, they cannot sell their shareholders to an outsider. They, would, they have to sell it back to the company. There are many reasons. The point is the company could always buy back the shares. Redemption qualified as a sale or as, as an exchange. So remember, you want, to, want the exchange to classify as a sale or an exchange. If it's qualified, shareholders report gain and losses on the stock surrender. Basically, you have a capital gain or a capital loss and you get taxed at either 0, 15 or 20% capital gain, long-term capital gain. So the shareholder, they reduce gains by the basis in the stock. So if you sold 10,000, your basis are two, you have a gain of 8,000. Now, remember that capital gains might offset capital losses if available. So if you have capital losses, for, let's assume you have stocks of other companies and you have losses, losses of 8,000, Guess what? The gains and the losses will offset each other and you're not responsible for any taxes. So that's why capital gains are good because you can you can offset them and two reasons why they are good. First, you can use them against capital losses if you have capital gains and if you have capital losses, you could use it against capital gain and the most importantly, you could deduct your basis. So, you, so the basis would reduce your proceeds. If the transaction appears as a dividend, well, what does that mean? It means if the shareholder owns 100% and corporation buys half of the stock for whatever dollar amount, the shareholder still owns the stock, therefore it's classified as a dividend. So if not classified as a redemption, shareholder would report dividend. You, you receive dividend. Dividend are taxed at 0, 15, and 20. Well, hold on a second. Capital gains are taxed at the same rate. So why would I care whether it's a capital gain or dividend? As I mentioned, two reasons. One, basis reduce the proceeds and we're going to work an example and net capital gain can offset capital losses so you, if you have gains and you have losses you can offset the gains with the losses or if you have losses and gains from other sources you can offset the gains with the losses but redemption proceeds may not offset by basis in stock surrender so if you said it's a dividend there's nothing you can do except tax you cannot offset capital losses now, if you are a corporate shareholder, not individual, you might like to receive dividend. Why? Because 
I'm sure you remember when we talked about dividend, you have a dividend received deduction. So let's assume Farhat Lectures also owned by Google. Yeah, right, but let's assume that's the case. Well, Google would prefer that when we take money out, they would receive it as dividend. Why? Because they would get a dividend received deduction. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to look at an example. Let's take a look at this example from an individual perspective. Adam, an individual in the 34% tax bracket, purchased stock in Farhat Corporation five years ago for 100000 This year, Farhat Corporation, with an EMP of $1.5 million, redeems his shares for 200000 So basically, Adam purchased the shares five years ago. Now, Adam turns around and sold the shares back to the company for 200000 and the company has plenty of earnings and profit. If the redemption qualify for the sale, Adam would realize a long-term capital gain of 100000 200000 minus the basis. His income tax liability will be 100000 He would qualify under the 15%, you know, 0, 15, or 20. He's qualified under the 15% based on his tax bracket. And he would be charged 15%, which is $15,000 on the $100,000. Now, if you don't know the long-term capital gain, 0, 15, and 20%, you want to go to that session and learn how do we tax long-term capital gain. If the stock redemption is not considered a sale, simply put, it's considered a dividend, well, it's the whole amount, the 200000 is dividend times also 15%, but that's going to give Adam a taxable of 30000 Adam can save $15,000 in income taxes if transaction qualify as stock redemption. Why? Because the tax bill is 15. As a dividend, the tax bill is 30. Let's take a look at another, it changed the scenario a little bit. Now, let's assume Adam carries a capital loss of $70,000 in the, in the current tax year. So when he made the sale, he also have a capital loss. If the transaction qualifies as a stock redemption, which want to show you the benefit of the capital gains when you have a capital loss, Adam can offset his entire capital loss against his long-term capital gain. So all in all, now his only gains is 30,000 and he will be taxed on that 30,000 times 15%. And Adam tax bill now is down to 4,500. Why? Because yes, he had a capital gains of 100,000 from the redemption of Farhat stock, but from another source, he had a capital loss of 70000 So his long-term capital gain, long-term capital gain is only 30000 times 15%. It's even better. So notice the benefit of the treating the transaction as a long-term capital gain. If that transaction does not qualify, then it's 200000 times 15%. You cannot offset anything. Also, assuming he has no capital gains in the current year, Adam would only be able to deduct 3,000 of the 70,000. Remember, he had the 70,000? He can only offset 3,000 out of it because this is the limit by law. Let's take a look when the shareholder is a corporation. Now, let's assume Adam is a calendar year, calendar year C corporation and that the stocks represent 45% ownership in Farhat Corporation. In the current year, Adam has a corporate taxable income of a million dollars before the stock redemption. So, if the transaction qualifies as a stock redemption, Adam will have a long-term capital gain of a 100,000 times 21% corporate rate, which is 21,000, assuming this is a sale. Let's assume Adam as a corporation now will have to treat this transaction as a dividend. If the 200,000 distribution is treated as a dividend, Adam would receive a dividend received deduction of 130,000. In other words, 200,000 times 65% dividend received deduction. If you don't know what a dividend received deduction, you want to go there and learn about dividend received deduction. So of the $200,000 in dividend, dividend received deduction lowered the dividend down to 70,000. Now with 70,000, we can live with that. Now our tax bill is 14,700, assuming Adam is a corporation. So notice, Adam as a corporation would prefer to receive the dividend. Adam, as a shareholder, will prefer to treat this as long-term capital gain. And I showed you in numbers the difference between the two. What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, especially MCQs, true false, additional exercises that's going to help you understand this stock redemption concept. Whether you are a CPA exam candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student, stock redemption is an important topic for the for your career. Good luck. Study hard and, of course, stay safe.